I'd like to uh, call the uh, special meeting, uh, joint meeting between the DRB and the Cal Select Board uh, to order. Um, and we'll probably want to do some reconfiguring or moving around so everyone has a chance to sit at the table who's representing the board. Whoa. Oh, no, that's just a sign-in sheet. Uh, I do. Uh, Gabriella Molina. Uh, David Delcor. How do we want to... Larry Bush. Circle around, right. Bill Powell. And, oh. Yeah. I, uh, I can... I'm going to try to put it up on the screen, Rose. Yeah. No. Pull in. We're at circle time. <laughs> Right. I can't do that. No. I'm kidding. Oh, well, so officially meet you. Too. Too. I didn't know that. But yes, I did too. Right. But <laughs> 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 here as well. Do I need any more room on my bed? Never mind. Extra seatings. Um, Gabrielle Molina. Larry Bush. Yeah. And, and that's it. Thank you. Looks like there's one pending oh, still. And there is a new one. James. Uh, James. Could you unmute yourself for a second and just give us a last name? Could you provide a last name for the Wells W E L L S? Thank you. Um, so welcome everyone. Um, the uh, purpose of the meeting is to uh, to have a uh, joint dialogue between uh, the DRB um, and uh, we've worked out a framework for an agenda uh, that includes uh, Gus uh, helping uh, with some uh, moderation to, to help kind of promote uh, kind of balanced participation by everyone and, and, the, and the public as well. Uh, so uh, with that, um, I'd like to uh, hand over uh, the, the reins of uh, leading uh, the conversation and leading us through the agenda uh, to, to Gus um, and a chance to um, go over uh, some more detail on, on, on kind of the purpose and, and how we're going to move through the dialogue. But I also think it might be helpful just to do maybe some names uh, and intros. I'm Gus Selig. I've been invited here because of my role as the town moderator. And uh, I've lived in Calus since 1976. And I'm Stephanie Kaplan. Um, I was a member of the DRB. I'm now an alternate on the DRB. Um, what can I say? I, I've lived in Calus. I've lived in Vermont for 40 years now. In Calus for 40 years. Um, I was taken off the DRB. One of the reasons I'm here is I'd like to find out why. Uh, I'm Chris Mahali. I'm a member of the Select Board. I'm Willa Farrell. I'm uh, the chair of the DRB. I'm Candy Smith. I'm vice chair of the DRB. I'm Jamie Morby. I'm the Select Board. Uh, Jordan Keyes, and chair of the Select Board. Just in the Select Board. Dennis Schaefer, DRB. Any other members of either body? No. So we're just all the public tonight. Just the public. Just the public. Not here with a stick. 
Jared Weiss, Chair of Planning Commission. Okay, um, let me say a few things as we get going. Uh, and the first is that um, this is not, I'm not a mediator, this is not a mediation. I'm not even a trained facilitator. Um, I have run a few town meetings and over the years been asked to moderate some other discussions. The two I remember most were um, a bunch of public meetings on ancient roads which had a number of people up in arms, and where would the town offices get built back in the day that we didn't have a town office. Um, um, so I'll do the best I can. There isn't, as with town meeting, a set of procedures um, uh, to be utilized for a meeting like this. Um, we got together a few weeks ago uh, I think it was Willa at that time and Scott and Jamie and Jordan to knock out an agenda. Um, and the agenda, I think, will probably... People that didn't introduce themselves. Oh, okay. Yeah, if there are people... Do we have any members of the, of the either body on the screen? Is it yeah, Gabriel? Gabriel. Good evening, Gabrielle. Hi, everybody. I'm Gabrielle Molina with the Development Review Board. Okay. And does anybody else on the screen want to introduce themselves? I guess not. <laughs> okay. Bill Powell is a member of the select board. I don't think I need to approve. No, not speaking for Bill Davis. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. That's fair, Bill. My sincere thoughts. At any rate, we got together a couple weeks ago and we knocked out an agenda, and the agenda will not be everything everybody might have wanted it to be, uh, but the decision I think we came to was to have an agenda that would be more future looking than past looking in terms of um, understanding each other's roles, a vision for the community, uh, and what we could do in the future to enhance communication. Um, and that's the agenda you see in front of you. I think we decided we were not going to discuss issues that had been raised um, around whether open meeting law had been violated or fundamentally uh, personnel matters. but. Um, I guess I will start the meeting just by acknowledging that any of us, hi Scott, uh, we're just getting started, so you're right on time. Nice. <laughs> and just for, and we've done introductions, but why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, Scott Message, uh, member of the DRB. Order. Thank goodness Rose is here. <laughs> yeah. um, so at any rate, that's the agenda we came up with. Um, I do want to acknowledge that anytime anybody applies for a job or has a job and they you don't get you don't get a job you've applied for or you're not appointed to a job that you've served in, and especially as a volunteer, it hurts. Um, and um, you know, uh, Tip O'Neill, the Speaker of the U.S. House, used to say all politics is local, and we had a speaker in Vermont named Ralph Wright who said all politics is personal. And in my experience, the more local it gets, the more personal it gets. I'll just start by also acknowledging I've got relationships with a whole bunch of people around this table of various types uh, that go back um, quite a few years. And Jamie, actually, with your family, it's probably the longest because your great-grandmother was a faculty member who taught Marianne at Goddard many years ago. <laughs> your grandmother and I worked together at Community Action, and she always blamed me for the reference I gave her to get the job with the ACLU, which she did so well. Um, and Ann and I have daughters that were born five days apart and together all through elementary school. And let's see, Dennis. We first began, what year did you begin at the Green Mountain Club? 
<laughs> long ago, Gus, I can't remember. Yeah, and then we worked together on lots of stuff at the Vermont Land Trust. So I've worked with lots of people and I, in various capacities. And I think, uh, I, Willa, I don't think I knew you or Candy till we met a couple weeks ago. So lots of different relationships. And my job is not really not to be taking positions, but to try to just guide the conversation. Um, at town meeting, they, the rule is you speak to the moderator, not to each other, as a way to depersonalize, I think, in part, the emotion that comes with some issues. Um, I've never tried to enforce that, uh, but if we find it gets tough tonight, I might, um, I might intervene. We are going to try to end this meeting in enough time, end this discussion in enough time. We will end this meeting in enough time for there to be public comments. Since we started 10 minutes late, we may be five or 10 minutes later on the public comment than is scheduled. Um, and I guess I would say that while the warning asks people to speak to the agenda here, um, I've never found that you can keep people from saying what is on your minds. Um, so we will hear from the public as you cho choose to speak. And again, if it gets off the point at some point, um, I may interrupt, but I will try not to do that. So um, any questions about the agenda or what I've laid out? before we jump in. Yes, uh, not so much a question that I think, well, we agreed it would be forward thinking, it would not be to the exclusion of talking about uh, the past. And I just wanted to check in with Jordan that you would, that, that that is your understanding yes. as well. Okay. So um, with that, the first item is really a discussion of the roles of the DRB and the select board. and. I don't know, Willa, if you and Jordan want to take the first cracks at that, or other people want to talk about how you see those roles. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I certainly have my perspective. I, you know, I think um, uh, as we've had a conversation about what, uh, what would be helpful dialogue, I think it's important to hear uh, what, uh, what members of each board um, kind of uh, force, in, uh, I guess not envision it, but interpret their role um, uh, on, on that board and, and the purpose of the board. Uh, um, it's, we don't get many opportunities to speak to each other uh, outside of uh, the, the, the functions of our, uh, of our meetings, and, and this would be a good opportunity to, to hear that, um, I think. Um, that sound fair? And I can just say briefly, I served on the DRB for two years. It doesn't meet regularly, so I don't feel like I have two years of experience. It feels still very new to me. Um, in the spring, I had been vice chair and became chair, and I've learned a lot in the last few months. Um, so, in short, I see our role as, uh, you know, taking the zoning regulations that have been approved by the town and using those to make decisions when people's applications come before us. Um, so that is, I guess, in a nutshell, how I've seen the role of, of the DRB. Does anybody want from the select board want to speak to what you? And you see the select board's role? Mm, sh sure. Um, uh, among other responsibilities, but I think most relevant to, um, to this, uh, this particular one, um, the, uh, the select board and its members are the, are the few elected uh, officials in the community uh, who are, are part of the representative democracy and, and responsible for uh, representing uh, the interests of, uh, uh, of, uh, of the community. Um, and uh, while the select board has the capacity to, uh, to make uh, changes to, uh, to the 
land use regulations. Um, uh, it, it can do so only in, in kind of a limited capacity um, and uh, or other ordinance and to very specific uh, procedures um, and that that function largely falls to uh, of, of crafting um, at, at, or making substantial changes falls to the uh, to the planning commission where uh, where they also uh, work on edits and changes to the town plan which collates the Feedback and aspirations of the of the community um, as a, as a living document and, and guiding document for how we make decisions. Um, uh, the select board's ability to make appointments to subcommittees is is one of its primary ways to influence policy relative to the. Uh, to the interests of the uh, to the community as uh, as they've received that feedback and as uh, as guided by uh, those documents that uh, that get reviews uh, revised um, incrementally. Stephanie, you had a hand up. A I do because I'd like to say something about about the role of the DRB. Um, I, I can't remember when I was appointed to the DRB this time. It was a few years ago. I was also in the DRB years ago for a while. Um, I'm also a, a retired land use attorney, um, and I've been on several different boards and commissions and callous over the 40 years that I've lived here. I found after um, the select board went into executive session to talk about the appointments, and came out of executive session and voted on some appointments and didn't provide any explanation. And eventually, the law, I guess your lawyer told you, you do need to provide an explanation because that's what the open meeting law says, an explanation for your decisions. You wrote something, I think Jordan drafted it and the, the select board um, issued it. And I, I was really taken aback at how, what the, what the reasons were for your appointing those people because it had very little to do with, in my view, what a quasi-judicial board, including the DRB in Callis, what the role is. It's a judicial, quasi-judicial. It's not, uh, we like the applicant, or we don't, or we think that we need housing, so therefore we're gonna give permits. It's not that at all. And you have this long characterization of Scott and Gabrielle and Janet that, I couldn't see anywhere in there where your description of their characters had anything to do with being on a quasi-judicial board, understanding regulations, knowing the callous regulations, knowing the callous town plan, having experience with municipal um, land use. I, I didn't see any of that or, or any quasi-judicial experience anywhere that would be what I would consider the qualifications. So I just want to say I found that a, a very dis, really disconcerting description of what you think is important for DRB members because it's not a question of my philosophy, you know, or my experience in town, you know. It's a question of am I capable of reading regulations, applying them fairly, being nice to the applicant, help being helpful to the applicant, which we had to do numerous times because they didn't know what they were supposed to provide because the zoning, zoning administrator never told them. So the DRB has taken on a very odd role, and that is we had to elicit information from the um, applicants to see if they actually meet the regulations because they would come to hearings and they don't even know they're supposed to do that. So to me, the role of the DRB is, as I just said, is to apply the regulations and the, town, the zoning regulations and the town plan fairly, politely, and thoroughly. And my philosophy about housing is not relevant to my capabilities and my fairness and my clarity in reviewing and ruling on applications. And, and I just think it's really important for this select board to understand what the what the role of a quasi-judicial body is, including the CALIS DRB, because it's a quasi-judicial body. And there's actually rules out there 
that apply to all quasi-judicial bodies in the state. And that's why when there was some upset a few years ago when um, the DRB apparently was not always applying the regulations, um, I agreed to be on the DRB and the town lawyer, Jim Barlow at the time, put together a training session for quasi-judicial DRB members because it's different from, it's not like the Conservation Commission, it's not like the Historic Preservation Commission. You have rules that you have to follow. And it wasn't following and I said, hey, I'll be, I'll join the DRB again, you know, to just sort of help it get, and then new people came on and the DRB was functioning really well. It had two retired attorneys and it had other people who had lots of knowledge and understanding of Callis's regulations and town plan and how to apply them and the DRB was doing great. And then we came up along with this situation. So I, I just wanted to try to clarify all that. And yeah. I agree with everything you said, frankly. I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. That our role is to, let me back up a minute. As I see it, it, kind of like Jordan explained, you're kind of the, you're the quasi-judicial body. You're the ones who hear the evidence and make the decisions. The Planning Commission is sort of like the legislative body, even though the buck stops with us. They're the ones who write the regulations. Our job becomes to appoint the people and who, who serve on these bodies. And I agree with you that they need to be people, first they need to be people of sound judgment which I think every member is. They need to be people who can apply the law fairly, which you very well articulated just now. They also need to be people who are able to make decisions based on evidence and not on past experience. And you know that very well. Of course you know that. But, we, but that's not always an easy thing to do. And it needs to be people we feel can do that. Um, we also want, as you said, a range of, of expertise and life experiences, people who bring different things to the table, and you also articulated that. But there's another thing that I think is important that we think about. We need people, uh, again, let me back up. A lot of times, even though you're applying the law, there are times when you use your discretion. For example, no undue adverse effect. That's not something that is just, it is or it isn't. It's something that people bring various values and life experiences to think to um, when they make these decisions. And I think, I see our job as choosing people who we feel are very able to reflect the values that the town has expressed through its town plan and in any other ways that we might know. We're, rep we're elected to represent the, the citizens, and it's our job to choose people, well, I think I said it, who um, understand the desires of the town at whatever given time that it's happening. And we, I'd be happy to have a more personal discussion about that. I don't want to discuss it about whether or not you reflected the values of the town. I'm just telling you that's one of the things that we have to take into account. I'd like to know how the values of the town are determined and who determines them. The select board decides what the values of the town are. I'm talking to you. <laughs> The town uh, decides what the values of the town are, and then they find well, people who reflect their values? they're expressed to a great extent in the town plan. And, yeah, it's, it's a little bit subjective. I agree. I, I, I don't disagree with you that it is subjective, but we do the best we can, just as you do the best you can when you try to determine, is it an undue adverse effect or isn't it? I just think that we should not, I agree that we should probably continue this conversation outside of here. Yeah. But I would really like to know what decisions I have participated in that did not reflect what was in the town plan. Okay. Well, Can anybody answer? Anybody who voted to, no. I should get off the TRB? No. I think Will has got the next shot, and then Dennis, and then I'll come to you. 
So while I don't serve on the select board, I think uh, as a member of this community, what I hope, and this is where I'm going to do a bit of history because I think it's relevant to the discussion, that in the decision making of the select board to make appointments, that, that how that process is done is as important as what the criteria are that the select board member, members use to make decisions. And I, uh, it was very hard not to talk about what happened this spring. And I think the process uh, was, was harmful. And I think that it's important for the select board to make decisions as transparently as possible in a way that is respectful of people who volunteer, whether it's for 40 years or two years. Um, and I think that what the process, there were harms caused. So I am going to speak a little bit about outsider roles because I feel it's important to do that. And that, so there were like individual, like as Gus named, there's a lot of long-standing relationships in this room. And there was harm done to those that I think is sad. It's really uh, unhealthy and sad. Um, and that it was more than hurt feelings that that process sent a message of disrespect to people who had contributed a lot. The, me the reasons may have been sound, but they weren't quite clear. So it's all the assumptions and second guessing inevitably happens. Um, and I think that without a transparent and understandable clear process, then people are discouraged. Other people may be discouraged, and frankly, I've heard have been discouraged um, from participating in uh, community volunteering. And I think because of that, uh, I have seen sort of reaction that in turn has been created other harm. So it's, I feel like there's been a snowball effect that has been uh, uh, not healthy. <laughs> um, that, it, that is counter to the values that I think we have probably all hold and that are in the town plan. And I, I guess I'll, I'll wind up by saying that I have, I hear that there's um, discretion involved, obviously, and things are not always black and white, but I will say that, uh, you know, from Anne, who's on the board when I joined, Dot Stephanie, Candy, Ryan, uh, Dennis and then the newer members that everybody has been like turning to the words and sometimes it's like well what does what does this mean so there has obviously been some element of like uncertainty but people have like any lawyer I know they're always pulling out the green book and that's what people, we have a green book too it's the zone I guess the plan is green but um, so I guess I have not I have seen people really adhere to what I think Stephanie has described as the role of the DRB. And um, one more thought I want to say. The, the uh, I'll stop there. There's more I can say, but I've spoken enough. Yes, it was yours. Well, so I just want to be talking about the, the roles of the DRB and the select board, I guess. I'm a little confused. I, I heard Stephanie say we're a quasi-judicial body and we're mandated to follow the town plan and the zoning regs. And I heard Jordan say this is the select board's opportunity to influence policy and by the people that they choose. We're not a policy setting body as I understand it. We are a body who's applying the regs and the town plan. So, you know, as you make those appointments, what's the, I, I never had the expectation that we were a policy setting body. So if I can speak to that a little bit, I think that that's in part kind of what I was kind of hoping, hoping to get to. Maybe somebody can help keep me on track. So I'd like to take maybe two steps back um, and and break a little bit of a rule uh, and, and talk uh, about the appointment and, and the process through which uh, the appointment decisions were, were made. And Stephanie, it, it's 
hard for me um, to you, <laughs> you and, and the rhetoric, rhetoric that has been fairly uh, public, and I know that, um, that it feels very personal uh, to not be reappointed, but the, the decision of the select board and the decision to go into executive decisions, those are, those, that was not, that was not me. to have a conversation uh, about the appointment, but uh, and not, you're acting surprised. And, and you're well, I'm acting surprised because Anne and I have been friends. Sure. So she was on the select board deciding not to reappoint me and easily could have picked up the phone before the decision but was I, made and yeah, talked to me about I it. I can't say, and I, and, I, and I don't think it's productive necessarily to, 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 get into, to, to get into, you know, why we made the decisions that we did, uh, other than saying that Nobody was going into it with the intention of hurting anybody. So, and, and you're being dismissive of that, and I'm just trying to articulate my No, opinion. I'm sure it's true. I'm sure you didn't intend to hurt anybody, but, but you, you have to admit that the, the right. non-process you followed was very hurtful by not telling anybody, not talking to anybody, having Ann call Willa the night before the, the, the select board met, and telling her that it, Dot and I weren't going to be appointed the day before the select board even met to make that decision. I, I, really, Jordan, I mean, there was something really very uncomfortable from our point of view going on. And there's still this, uh, it still makes me very uncomfortable. You can say that there weren't relationships. There were relationships. I had a relationship with Anne. Just for me, I was just speaking for myself. Oh, I thought you were talking about in no. general. No, 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 That's okay. Myself. Right, myself. right. Um. I, I, you know, I, I, with each of the members of the select board, I have, I have gained the opportunity to have uh, hard, hard conversations. I am a relatively new member of the community. Uh, I've been around for uh, 10 years in Calix. Um, uh, the family uh, that brought me uh, here uh, has been around longer than that and has very deep connections through the community. I do care about the community. Um, um, so I'd, I'd leave it leave it at that. But if, if we could switch back uh, to Dennis's uh, point um, and the quasi judicial, you know, you know making appointments uh, for the planning commission, those uh, for for some of the other commissions that or committees, subcommittees. That's that's where I see there being like a more more purely policy driven um, uh, application of uh, or in the, in consideration there, but. It, but the DRB is unique because it, it serves a, a quasi-judicial role. However, I, it has been expressed um, that the DRB's only function is to just apply the regulations uh, evenly and without bias. However, the regulations have inherent discretion, discretionary decisions that are that are built into them. There's some of them do, yeah. Uh, well, there's the 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 regulations, the Callis regulations say the DRB may 53 times. There's a lot. There's a lot of discretionary decisions, and and it, it it's it comes into that's what affords that's what affords the community to make decisions relative to the circumstances that are coming before the board, right? No, I mean maybe it says it 53 times, but for the most part, there are very there are some very specific regulations, and sometimes it gives the DRB the discretion to issue a variance. But in, in general, there's some it's very specific, and and there's state regulations too that the DRB is also yeah. implementing yeah. about water quality and things like that. I mean, 
know, but there, there are, I mean, the undue adverse effect, but even then, there are tons of decisions out in the world, in, in the Vermont world, judicial world, interpreting that. So it's not totally, totally subjective and out, you know, totally out there for anybody to interpret the way they want. But the primary, the primary function is to look at circumstances and applications that are relative to conditional uses, situations where there need to be, uh, where there need to be exceptions considered, at least. Not, maybe, maybe not accepted, for sure, no, but, can, but considered. Say that. The regulations are clear about when you, can make, you know, when you can make an exception and when you can't. I mean, the regulations are pretty clear about that. I don't want to belabor it, but... Yes. So, just for clarification then, trying to bring us back to the rules. Based on the appointments that you made, the decision that you made, are you saying that the DRB was not making the correct decisions? That we were, we were not interpreting those areas where there was vagueness. And, then, and I'll be the first, Anne and I have had numerous conversations about the challenges of the town plan. It says protect the environment. It right. says provide housing. Right. Yeah, that's difficult. But I, I believe the DRB, as Willow said, I mean, we, you know, we pull those books out. We, we don't always agree, but I think we've come to good decisions. But I think what I'm hearing you say based on your ability to influence policy, the decisions that you made about appointments, that we were not interpreting that correctly. So, and, and, and let me just, here, let, let me, me kind of, kind of, yeah, sure. Let me just follow sure. that up with, and if you felt that way, why wasn't there any feedback? Nobody came to the DRP. We never heard anything about that. No one ever said, to us, oh, you're not interpreting that properly. Well, that's, that's one of my questions. Is there a defined process for giving feedback to the DRB? Could you just pick up a phone and call the chair? But, yeah, but but somebody who's just gone, but somebody who's just gone through a fairly contentious application process and feel like that they they may not have had a fair uh, fair shake of consideration relative to their circumstances. What's the they they may not be comfortable, and are we promoting an environment where they should feel comfortable to provide that feedback? They can talk to the select board. Yeah. The select board would come I'm not saying the should come to the So that's board. so okay. That's interesting. So they they'll contact the select board and say what. Why not? I mean, I don't know what you just said, whatever you said. I'm very unhappy with the decision that was made. Something, this is what you're, I think your DRB members are, are out of their minds and stupid and they don't know what they're doing. And I think you should consider getting rid of them and getting some new people who like to approve projects like mine. I mean, I don't know, but you don't, they wouldn't call it the DRB. And the select board would not interfere. It is absolutely not allowed to interfere during the process. Correct. Okay. But afterwards, if somebody's unhappy, they contact the select board. They tell them they're unhappy, and they tell them why. And the select board can contact the DRB and say, "So and so is really unhappy. He said this. What's your? What do you think happened? You know, the DRB can explain this decision. It's perfectly capable of explaining to you who appoint us." Why we made a decision the way we did. And you might agree and say, oh, geez, I didn't realize that. That's not what he said. Or you can say, man, you know, you guys are really out there with your interpretations, you know. I mean, yeah, but that, that could take that could take a long so yeah, okay, well, thank you. So here we've made a decision and 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 the process through which or the lack thereof uh, as it has has been said is not good enough or, or valid or that it shouldn't. I mean, the sentiment has the, the, the... You didn't talk to us. Okay. That's the big problem. You didn't talk to us. You never called and told somebody on the DRB, yep. oh, you know, people are complaining. It's too hard to get a permit. That's, came, that's third hand. Well, should have called out the DRB. Should have met with us and said so-and-so thinks it was too hard. What really happened from your point of view? You know, that would have been a productive dialogue. Uh, yeah, I think that, you know, the decision from, from my standpoint was based on a lot of 
community feedback. And I can't offer a specific example uh, of specific decisions. It's, it, it's not that finite. It's not that, oh, the DRB did a bad job in this situation, right? That's not what, the, what it was. It was more, I talked to a lot of people and I was receiving general feedback that it felt like a time for a change for the DRB. And, and I didn't come into the discussion around it with any conclusions on what that would be. And I concur that our um, communication could have been a lot better and was lacking. And that was a mistake. It, I really, I, I think it was. I agree with that. And I think that every member of the select board came to that conclusion for valid good reasons. Um, we may have used, you know, had better processes, but I think that um, it was based on the feedback we were receiving. So first I want to thank Jamie and Jordan for acknowledging that the process wasn't great. I, I, that is significant to me and I appreciate that. And I think going forward, one of the things we've been talking about on the DRB is because we have heard these rumors that we don't really know exactly what they, are, what they mean um, about, we've talked, uh, we have an administrative meeting in September to sort of work on these, but um, as Stephanie mentioned, we have, in my experience, we've had people come who are uh, totally unprepared for a DRB hearing and really have, do not know what they needed to do change midstream, and I'm sure it was super, super frustrating for those people, and I'm guessing, I don't know, that that's some of the feedback that the select board may have heard. So in terms of forward thinking, what we've discussed are three things. One is to look at the current permit application and make recommendations to the Planning Commission about how could that be improved? What could be different about this application? Secondly, um, having a document to help people, like what to expect at your DRB hearing, just basic information so people come better prepared and uh, informed. Um, and then the other thing was to solicit feedback, to have a formal process after a decision has been made to, to ask people, how did it go, what went well, what could be done better. So these are just ideas that at the most recent meeting, which only had four of our seven members, six or eight if you include our alternates, I think I'm losing track of numbers. Um, so this is just preliminary thinking, but I just want to acknowledge that, you know, Scott and Gabrielle when were part of that discussion and we're, you know, so we are thinking about that. Um, and so I, that is something to me that is important and can be valuable going forward. I do. It was pretty much what Willa and Dennis had said and others just acknowledging that the process itself up front is what, the fr what drove the frustration. It was the, the rumors that came out of it is that you know, we didn't know what was going on and the lack of transparency. So we've already addressed all that, taken responsibility for it. The missing part that's really frustrating is that you had feedback from community members and you're keeping that in confidence, which I understand because you want people to be able to come to you in confidence, but it's still frustrating because what does that mean? Where was it? Was it um, specifically targeted at certain people after every time they had a, um, an application submitted? Was it the process itself? Was it not knowing what they were getting into? So we're gonna fix that going forward. We're not fixing the part of who said what to who, um, but I, I'm not sure that would be appropriate, honestly. Um, frustrating, but I don't think it would be appropriate to, um, to not have people want to come to you and, and talk about their frustrations. 
On the other hand, I feel like um, there was that that gap of okay, are we next? Like, what are, what's missing, and what did we do wrong? Did we are we not following something that we should be? Are there things that we you know with the town plan and things changing? Okay, are we? What's going on? Um, and then to your point, Stephanie, we follow the guidelines, we follow the law. We're not. We, there's there's not a lot of gray area there. Um, well. So it's just, it's been a frustrating, frustrating process. Um, I don't think that we should target people and say, um, it's, it's your fault, Jamie, that, you know, that Stephanie's not on here anymore or Doss not on here anymore. I would like to think that you don't have a personal agenda. Um, I'd like to think that everybody on the select board doesn't have a personal agenda and it's not personal. Um, that said, there's been cases Right, that we have seen, and they didn't come out the way people wanted it to around this table. Um, so you can't help but think that. Um, but I would like to um, believe in everybody that is volunteering for the town that we are trying to make it better, and we are listening always, and we're trying to always advance and improve. Um, so what's next? And I know that doesn't help for Dot and Stephanie, and I am so sorry that this has happened to you, and I am very sorry that you were deeply hurt by it, and I can understand why, and you've really given a lot to the town through the years, and I personally very much appreciate that. Um, and, and now it's what can we do going forward so that this doesn't happen again to, to others, and that people in the community feel like they want to be on the board or they want to volunteer on different boards, not just DRB, but others too, and know that they have support from the select board and there's going to be transparency. And if there's an issue, come to us. We can take it. We're all adults here. We can have conversations. I want to respond to Jamie's comments about how she heard this and she heard that. I've been involved in land use issues in this state for a very long time. I was executive officer of the Act 250 program in the 80s and 90s. It have, and it, it's going on in the legislature all the time. Every time anybody starts talking about Act 250, a bunch of people come out, all the developers, the chambers of commerce, and they all have horror stories. And once those horror stories details come out, well, it turns out, oh, gee, maybe there was another side to that. Maybe they're pissed because of, some, you know, they, as we were talking about, maybe they didn't understand. You know, there's a lot of reasons why people are angry at regulators, at especially land use regulators. But it doesn't mean that they're right. It doesn't mean that there's something wrong with the regulations or the people who are administering them. But if you don't say anything, if you don't find out the details and bring them, if you are making decisions about, for instance, my appointment, based on things you've heard about the, the behavior of the DRB or me or something I did or said, how can, how can we function like that? You know, it's, it's innuendo, it's, 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 it may be true, it may not be true, but you can't not find out. You can't just take people's word for it, people complaining because they didn't get what they wanted, and then turn around and make important decisions based on things you've heard without coming to the board and saying, hey, we heard this, what happened? I, I think that's just fairness, you know? And if you don't want to do that, then don't make decisions based on what you hear. If you're not going to come to talk about part it, of it was saving face, right? to hear the other side, maybe you just shouldn't make decisions based on it, that's all. Yeah. Okay, so the next agenda item that we said we talked about is talk about what our vision for the town is. We sort of get into some of that, but not much. Maybe. Maybe for that as a question. I don't really understand the question. The vision for the town? When we met, there was a discussion about that it would be good to talk about what our vision for the town is and how that, I suppose, impacts what's in our town plan, how we deal with regulations, how we grow or don't grow. I mean, I, I guess I'd, I'd add a caveat there. I, you know, there was, it wasn't the intention to, you know, kind of hash through the spe specifics of, of the town plan. That's, there's a, there's a process for that. The planning commission is involved in it at, in this moment. And I think they're doing a really great job of 
uh, of soliciting input from the community, looking at every section uh, in, in a thoughtful way and then and handling it in a, in a fairly systematic way. And then as a select board, we uh, added at earmarked time and agendas to cover them so that we have kind of that double exposure of having people participate. I mean, uh, those who have been participating on these boards know that it, it, uh, there's a lot of work to be done and there's a lot of effort put into things and then inherently the public shows up at the last minute because they've just got word of it and you lose, you feel like you've lost, uh, lost track of it. But at the same time, I've certainly been on in, in situations where I feel like I'm having a hard time keeping track of all of the conversations that I feel like I want to participate in. And, um, uh, and, and I think there's a lot of work that can be done uh, there as well. Um, but the, and I, and I really want to kind of take some time, I guess, and it's still applicable in this section to, to talk about the, the town plan and the values and, and how we communicate around the town plan or how we use the town plan as a guiding, as a guiding document. Um, because under conditional use considerations, you have to meet the criteria of the conditional use uh, standard. And, and in there, it says, taking into consideration the town plan and its, and its values. And in the town plan, there are con competing interests. Um, and so how do we, as a community and as board members, or as a quasi-judicial body, weigh those things. We're, we're in a period where we have fairly acute affordable housing issues. It's reality. So how are we looking at our processes? And I hear what you're saying, Stephanie, with, with Act 250, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm not a, you know, anti-regulation. I mean, that, that is your tool when you really need it and, and your tool to help shape your community relative to the values that have been established by the community. But when, but we as individuals and as a community need to be able to step back and look at our guiding documents incrementally and see if there had been unintended consequences for our decisions. And, and so I've experienced in my limited, limited time uh, in trying to interact with the governance of, of Calis at a certain unwillingness to, to have those conversations. And, and maybe that doesn't seem like a fair characterization for everybody, but that's been my experience. And, 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 I, and I've, I've heard other people express to me that A, they feel like they've lost control of, uh, of a community that they grew up in and it doesn't, it doesn't feel the same. And that's a big one, that's an elephant. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to unpack unpack that particular thing, but I've also heard something similar from, uh, from professionals who say if you're trying to do anything development-wise in, in Calus, don't bother, find another place. And I think that's highly problematic. I think both of those sentiments are highly problematic, problematic even if it is just a misinformed characterization, it is a recurring theme that has been coming up. And so now in the context of the affordable housing uh, the affordable housing issue, there are incremental decisions that get made through the weighing of an application that continue to add costs to, to the development process. And, and if, if we have the perception that either I need to skirt the regulations to avoid costs or uh, or I need to hire attorneys and engineers and all of these things just to help guard myself against getting through the process, those, those are incremental costs that do add up and aggregate together and continue to add costs to, uh, to adding housing inventory in the community that, that has expressed a desire to grow and support itself. Tell us, I want to go through all the applications 
all the permits that have come, and I'd like to know because I haven't sat on anything controversial that I know of. You know, I didn't sit on your case. No. You know, I didn't sit on anything controversial. So, and I would, but the ones I, I reviewed, I would really love to know what, what's being said about them because it's serious. It's very consequential. When you're making decisions and your concerns, and you have genuine concerns about things that you've heard, things people have told you, but, but you don't know, you haven't come to the DRB and said, wait, what happened here? You know, this person said it was really difficult to get through. What happened? You know, and maybe it was as simple as, well, they came to the DRB with no information, you know, because that's common. You know, there's just, we had to say, we can't, we can't rule in your application because we don't know the details, you know, and that happened several times on things I was sitting on, and what can we do? You know, they have to provide, the regulations say they have to provide certain information. So I'm just saying, I think it's important, it would be important for the DRB members who are ruling on applications to understand and to, review, to understand what they might be doing or we might be doing that's considered obstructionist or for you to understand what people are misunderstanding. Both might be happening, but I think it would be important to have this dialogue. Real quick, I'd like to believe that when people did come to you that it was validated, that you were able to pull, either were aware of those situations that happened, or you were able to pull them, take a look at it, and then you were seeing a common theme. I would like to think that you did due diligence before any decisions were made. Yeah, I mean, yeah. absolutely. I, yeah. That, for me, uh, personally, I can only speak for myself, but when, when somebody comes to me well, like with that kind of feedback, first of all, I, I, I think I'm, I would, like, I would like to think that people would trust that I would do that. I, I wouldn't be here and participating in these conversations if I wasn't, if I wasn't interested in seeking that information. And, um, and, and to Dot's uh, credit, the, uh, the documentation of those, uh, of those cases uh, make it, uh, make it easy to go in and see those things. I think there's a lot of work that can be done uh, to, to make that um, just more uh, cohesive because it really kind of depends. And, and some of that is, is lack of preparedness and some of it's just like lack of, some issues are more complex or less complex than the others, but through the minutes you can, you can absolutely start to see patterns of lines of dialogue and questioning that that provide feedback and data points that that do raise concerns and and I don't I disagree that like I, I don't think it would be worth getting too far down into the weeds on on individual matters um, uh, but I, I do think uh, that it it would be more beneficial to the community to have more of these types of uh, uh, dialogues be between certain boards, particularly the DRB, particularly the Planning Commission. There, there needs to be, a, they, they have such a huge impact, immediate impact on the community that those, th that we need a system for that. So I'm more interested in having a, a dialogue about what, what is the process for that feedback? How are we gonna capture it? How often are we gonna look at it? When are we going to take a, a when are we going to take a, a town plan and what does it say in there? What is, our, what is our measurement for trying to deliver on the aspirations and the values that are in, in the town plan? Um, I feel like we've moved kind of into the last item, which is what are the opportunities? Yeah. yeah. And so I just want to name it for the future. And I don't know whether there ought to be a joint meeting Planning Commission, the DRB, and the Select Board twice a year. Um, I think the lady suggested a few things a few minutes ago that would be helpful, but maybe that's where we can go for 10 more minutes and then open up for public comment. If I just quickly add that I think uh, the DRB is one part of the process and at the, the end of the process, and I think you can't look at, I mean, this. Um, you use the phrase Jordan patterns of questioning, and that, and that I think would be important for the DRB to hear that. And you may not want to go into the specifics of the past cases, as 
Stephanie has suggested, but I do think there would be some value in having specific feedback that the DRB could digest and reflect upon. Um, and I don't think, from what I've seen, you can separate out the, the permit application process, the regulations, and the plan, because they all, they all funnel into the point where the DRB is making decisions. And so I don't think you can look at that in isolation, which is probably goes to Gus's point and suggestion of joint conversations amongst more than just these two groups. Scott, I don't want to pick on you because you're usually thoughtful and you haven't said anything. Do you want to jump into this at all right now or do you want to ask? There's a lot to think about, but a lot of good ideas have come up. Oh, okay. <laughs> a lot of good ideas have come up. Um, I think uh, uh, Jordan and Jamie have, have um, recognized that the process could have been better. I'd say it was awful. Um, thank you, Gus, for the opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, there's two things I'd like to talk about in terms of going forward. The first is, I think that you should not go into executive session to talk about appointments of boards and commissions. The tradition has been in Cowles that it's not an open session. Now, you don't have to do it, but I'm just saying, it, it just looks a lot better, number one. Number two, the public has a chance to hear something about the applicants. You know, I don't know that there were any public interviews of anybody. There used to be public interviews so that people could come and hear what the candidates, what were they like, and the select board asked some questions. And anyway, I just think that I don't see any point in going into executive session. I think it, it doesn't look it doesn't look right. You know, what are you what, what are you hiding? You know, executive sessions, as you know, are supposed to be used rarely. They're not supposed to just be used when you might say something that's uncomfortable and you might not want Stephanie to hear it. You know, they're supposed to be used when you really need to do things privately. And I don't think discussing appointments is something you have to do privately. Um, also, I would ask that in the future, you talk to people before you make decisions about their appointments. You just talk to them, pick up the phone. Hey, you know, we've been hearing this or that about you. Can I just respond to, to that point? Before we went into executive session, none of us knew what the others were likely to do. All right, so we couldn't. We not could you call them? You couldn't call them. I called them. Told them. Told I did not tell her we were going to reappoint you. I told her from what I was hearing, it's a possibility. Don't call me and say, I mean, we may not re we may not reappoint you because I've been hearing these things, and, and I think maybe you shouldn't be on the board yeah, anymore. I, I, I think you. You've all made that point pretty clear. As I should have done that. Okay. So I'm just hoping in the future that that's, that we'll do that in the future. Yeah. But, but, but the fact is, we can't tell you what our decision is until we talk to each other about it. Well, you could still say we're thinking about it. You know, you're thinking about it. You can say we're thinking about it. That's what we might do. Do you want to come to the meeting and kind of make your case or something, or hear what the problems are? That seems to be pretty. You know, common sense. The other thing I wanted to say was that Jordan was talking about what do we do? There are contradictory statements in the town plan. I couldn't agree with you more. I think now is the time to do something mm -hmm. because they're working on rewriting it. Now is the time, and I think it's it's time consuming, but it's really worthwhile for everybody who's dealt with the town plan. And you, I know you did in your case to go through it and find those things that are contradictory, that are difficult to interpret and propose changes to the to the planning commission to try to clarify it. I mean, it needs to be clarified. I agree with you. Uh, you know, well, well, if yeah. I could just offer just a point of clarification. I, I it, it, it's not contradictory. It's not like do this or do that. It, it's competing. That's, yeah. It's competing. Right. And so right. neither of those neither of those things are inherently wrong. They are situationally specific, and they need to be balanced. And sometimes, in a point in time, 
one thing might need to be prioritized over another, and we need to continue to we need to continue to look at it and evaluate it and see how we're doing. Um, and so they, it's not contradictory. It's compete. We're always going to have. Hopefully, I would hope we would always have a town plan that has some form of competing interests in there. Uh, there, nothing can occupy it. Uh, yeah, there's something's really outstanding, and there are outstanding things in there. Sure. Sometimes things can be modified in some way. Yeah. You know, sometimes there can be something added to it, or you know, some caveat or something. That, that's all. I do think it's worth looking at and, and bringing them up and talking with the planning commission about them when they've yeah. created problems in the past. But I think, but I guess it, it, it gets. It, you're right. I'm not disagreeing with you. But uh, and and I love these conversations. Honestly, like I really do, um, because I think they're important. <laughs> um, it's it's easy to sit in a room and have this conversation. It's so much harder to sit with a situation where where you're in a gray area, and 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 then weigh those things out. We we. We'll likely have a lot of uh, alignment as a community around. We would like to be a place where people feel welcome in adding homes, or we want to conserve natural resources and protect sensitive habitats and all of those things. That, and I'm not, I'm not making a judgment on any one of those things being inherently better than the other. Those are, they're just always going to be competing, uh, competing interests. But, um, but as a select board. That's where it kind of gets back into the, the policy thing. Those are always going to be weighed by a board. And you want it weighed by a board because it diversifies and diffuses bias. There's, if it were so black and white that this is just what we're doing, then we would just need a zoning administrator to apply that. It would be a remarkable amount of work. And there's obviously statute that says there needs to be uh, a DRB. But it's, it's not that black and white. And we do need to. We do need to d diversify uh, the, the representation and the skills and the understanding of all of those things on the committees and the commissions uh, and, and the boards. Well, for your information, right now, the Conservation Commission is working on the natural resources section of the town plan. They are, we are, trying to work some of this out so yep. there would be areas where the natural resources need to be protected and areas where development would be encouraged. Sort of just what the legislature did just sure. recently. Okay, they're working on that. Everybody, the Conservation Commission is meeting every two weeks, talk, we're working on the natural resources section of the town plan, we're meeting, our meetings are noticed, they're on front porch forum, they're on Wednesday nights at seven o'clock, and everybody's welcome because we're working on that right now. We're not, we're not, it's yeah. not gonna be perfect. It's never gonna be perfect. It's always gonna require some judgment. But we are trying to deal with it in a, in a more, in some kind of objective way. And if you wanna have an input, come to our meetings. Yes, well, I, I, it's just building on that. It's never going to be perfect. So I, I don't want us to have these elevated expectations. Mm. And Gus, I think you started this by saying Sometimes people don't get the challenge they want. Sometimes people don't get the answers they want. And a lot of rhetoric, such as nobody's listening to me, believe me, DRB's listening. We just might not give you the answer you want. But if we're trying to do the job that we're supposed to do. So, you know, it's not a perfect world. And, you know, as, as long as we have these regulations, and we have a board that's supposed to interpret them, people sometimes are going to be asked to do things that they don't expect them to do. They may have to spend some money. They want to plan to spend. But you know we're trying to uphold the rights in the town plan. And I guess the other thing I would add is it doesn't, I've heard a lot that maybe makes me feel like the, the select board wants to influence the town plan by its appointments. And I would just say, remember, the town plan is about the whole community. It's not the select board, it's the town plan. It's right, it's voted at the end by the whole town. No, I think the, I think the select board adopts the town plan. The town, the town, the town adopts the zoning. Oh, the, the town the adopts the zoning and the select board adopts the town plan. Yeah, that's the way it is now. But that doesn't mean they can rewrite it. Right. 
I mean, it goes through a process, and there's public hearings and everything else. They can't just sit down and rewrite the town plan and adopt it. But they do have the ultimate. Is there any other new thoughts, anything else on the table in that for the future, or are you ready to open this up to public comment? Yes, um, one idea that the DRB had discussed is for the select board to have um, it's some written statement about what is the process for appointments. For example, Candy and I were both interviewed before we were appointed by the, the previous members of the select board. Um, and I think that could be helpful for future applicants to know that the select board, this is the process the select board follows when um, appointing people. And I realize you might not want that for every single committee and commission and board, but there are probably a few that have more impact on people's lives. And so I, I would like to put that idea on the table. As and to well. follow up, and what are the criteria? Mm -hmm. So if people know what the criteria are, what you're looking for, then people will know whether they meet those criteria. I mean, that's a pretty common thing to do. I mean, uh, you know, what is it you're looking for? What does this job entail? I, I mean, I think that's fair. I would, I've been wrestling through that myself and with, in other conversations and just kind of seeking guidance on how to kind of work through that. I, I think it's important. I think uh, for me, it, it, it's easy to say that, ooh, sure, the solutions is just to say that uh, there needs to be a process because the, the most recent example is that there wasn't one and that resulted in, in hurt feelings. But, uh, and, and, but, But I can also see a situation where, where you define a process like that and we're a small community. We keep saying that. So what happens, even if we sit in a room and we all have an agreement on what we want to be the ideal representation, but we still need to have people in those seats and we can't find them. You know, it'd be, it would be great to have architects on there. It would be great to have a builder on there who, or, or at least an engineer or a project manager or something. Somebody who, somebody who lives and breathes in that particular space and can be the expert representation of that perspective. Uh, and, and again, it comes back to the costs for me. If there's somebody on the board who can speak to the validity of somebody's plan, even if they didn't go out and hire a professional, they are themselves a professional with a perspective that can Say, yeah, you're on the right track, that's fine, that is acceptable, we don't need you to go out and get a fully engineered whatever. Um, and so, but you can't get a builder from the community to sit on the board because they don't, they're gonna have conflicts of interest all over the place. Uh, and and, and it's, it's hard to find the engineer, it, it's hard to find the perfect scenario for every representation if we were going to create little models of who, who we would want to be on there. So how do we, how do we work through the secondary decisions and try. considerations? You can, you can try. You just, just we just did. We just, we just didn't do it well. Well, I think one of the things that I heard you say. Or through a process that you felt was transparent, and, and that I acknowledge for sure. But, that, but that, is, that is literally what we just tried to do. But then you can set up, well, I think what we'll suggest is just set out the process in writing. We're going to you know, solicit people, we might look for X kind, kind of people, or maybe not, but we're then going to interview people yep. publicly, then we're gonna, you know, just, yeah. just that basic process. Yeah, no, I, I think you're absolutely, you're absolutely right, and I think there's more dialogue to be had around it. I'm, I'm not comfortable just like going headlong into forming a committee to start yeah. defining that, you know, but like, but I, but I do think that particularly for certain boards, and that's even, that's part of it. So like part of the response of this particular select board who didn't have a lot of experience going through this, and, and from, from, from my perspective personally, um, I, I was not comfortable just coming into every year and just rubber stamping a slate of candidates for every position. It doesn't feel like a genuine consideration. And, and so now we've started to kind of work on breaking that apart. And we knew that the DRB was important. We know that the Planning Commission is important, but we haven't written these things, uh, written these things down. And I, I, don't, I don't want to be careful not to devalue any of the other subcommittees by, you know, by saying, well, you're just not as important. We're just going to accept folks. You know? um, so we have, we have to work through that conversation, um, for sure.
um, and be more mindful and deliberate with those decisions. I think I, there I, was a time when anybody who wanted to be on it, including incumbents, had to come and be interviewed. You had to yeah. apply, and that, yeah. you know, just because you were, it was your position doesn't mean you're moving. Right. You know, there's three other people who want to be on it. Right. Oh, you come, and we'll interview you all, and then we'll choose them. I thought that was a great. Yeah. I, I mean, it's going to make an editorial comment to say, I think that's a really fair process. I do want to think, say, I think the select board had a super busy year last year. Who thinks that? Probably diverted their attention. Um, I want to give Candy the floor, and then I really do want to open this up is just, comment. This is just. It's really quick, and it's really about what you're both saying. And one of the things that I heard repeatedly when we met was that um, you were looking for different perspectives and you were looking for balance. So, you, like you said, an architect or an engineer and what each individual can offer, not heavy-sided over here, not heavy-sided over here, but really looking for balance and different perspectives. I think that we all work together when we were doing our job as DRV, and we all have, you know, different ways of thinking. Um, we didn't always agree on everything, and I think that's really important. Um, and I hope that that's, and what I'm hearing, I've had conversations with Jordan briefly with Ann, I just met Jamie tonight. Um, but what I have heard through our meetings was that it's really important with the, the town plan moving forward, the direction we're going with public input, is that we do have balance on the boards and not just DRB, but on all of our boards. And I don't think that you can put that in a box. I think we can do an outline of, you know, it'd be nice to have this, this, and this, but it depends on who's on there at the time, and you might have different needs at that point. But that's it. Okay. Are we ready for public comment? So, as chair of the planning commission, who is taking on the town plan as one of his children, number five, uh, I like that. And principal of Cowles Elementary School. And new principal of Cowles Elementary School. Taking cues from select board as a, the judicial, or not the judicial, the legislative body of the town to sort of build off of. Um, and we're making it broad. We're trying to be broad. But at the same time, we talk about it all the time. Um, John McCullough says this all the time. When there becomes a moment when DRB has a question, when there's a discretionary moment, you revert back to the town plan. Right? You can use it, okay, well, what did, does this really mean? What did the town want from this? So we, we do have this difficult balance between broad and specific competing interests. We are working on that. That is one of the things that we are doing. We are trying to find, to get out contradictions, not competing interests, because they are two different things. Some of them you cannot. More housing and protecting more land. Those things are just going to be competing. Um, but I've heard a lot tonight, you know, we have a section that's municipal services. It lists all the commissions and, and boards and things. I think maybe having one about the DRB and the process, maybe pulling that out as part of something could be not the whole process, not all the things you're talking about, because that's way too specific for a time. But, but being a little more like the DRB is, is you know, here's what it is and laying that out. Uh, town plan does have action steps. Those action steps could include improving, right, the process for permitting and what that looks like. Again, we just we just are trying to put goals, things in it. That's what it looks like. Gus, I love your suggestion of the three getting together a couple of times a year, right, or something like that. So um, I love everything you're hearing. I've tried to take notes. Um, there, I think there's a lot here that as we build the town plan going forward. We want it to be nimble. Um, when I used to teach economics in high school, we used to teach them that we were preparing them for jobs that didn't exist. Well, we are preparing a town plan that won't be the same three years, and in five years, and in ten years. It just won't. We're trying to build a nimble, 
broad yet specific and workable town plan. Um, but that gives DRD direction as well, right? That you can go, okay, this is, right? Letter of the law versus spirit of the law. Well, what was the spirit of it, right? So when you come to a question, well, should we build that? Well, what does the town plan say, right? If you get to that point. So, um, and just like you pointed out, Stephanie, we put, uh, well, we have meetings every two weeks. I'm putting out the, the drafts of every plan for people to comment. I'm telling you, we've had half a dozen public comments. So that's a lesson. That's a, that's a, uh, and so the same thing, we're putting that out there. But I would love to have DRB's input, especially on that part when we get to you know, the future as we look forward with this process. So uh, tomorrow night, there is one. And every, every other Tuesday. So to be happy to have you. Thank you. So I'm Don Helling, I was on the DRB. Um, Jeremy, we looked to the town plan for virtually every decision, especially when there were discretionary rights. So it's not that that hasn't been done, it's been done from the get go. Um, Jordan, you say the process wasn't in existence, but there's still no reason. Uh, I don't see the new people who were appointed as setting that sort of reverse balance that we're looking for. Um, and are you saying that no matter whose seats came up for um, renewal, they would have been moved aside? Is that what you're saying? Or is it really about the two of us? I was called an obstructionist by one of the applicants. I have an environmental need. I feel very strongly about environment. But that doesn't mean I'm going to um, decide against development. But we have one applicant who showed up for a site review. And as we're standing there, we realized that the right of way that was in the application and being proposed, that we had done a lot of investigation on and, and thinking, he had changed it. You know, he started talking about it coming from a different direction. And so Ryan, who was our chair at the time, said, we can't do that. You have to give us a new site plan. Well, we recessed so we could go get this new site plan and submit it. And then we, we you know, we, we continued with the meeting. But yet in the next meeting, I guess, I don't think Stephanie was there, but we were there. He called me an obstructionist. I mean, I was doing my job. So it would have helped if you had talked to us and said, so somebody says, you know, you won't let them build it right away. What was going on? That's what was going on. That kind of thing. Um, and we had applicants who didn't like the result because you know we were preserving wetlands or you know, wildlife crossings or whatever. You couldn't build the big road that you wanted to put into the property. That's in our regs. Um, I really recognize that everyone in this room cares about the town is trying to do what we think is best, and that we all have different perspectives. Um, I appreciate, Jordan, that you're acknowledging the things that we're done with. But there's still some things that eat at me, and I will say to you that I was very hurt, I'm very disappointed, and I'm very disillusioned in the town process. Um, when Ann told Willa not to tell us that we might not be reappointed, well, I met with us the next night with myself and Ryan to discuss her transition to chair. And Ryan was leaving, but with my assistance, because I was a clerk. When Ann called me after the decisions had been made, she said it was because of a different direction that you folks wanted to take. And that's not the purpose for our seats on the BRB. We don't, we don't create directions. We don't put perspectives. We apply the regs, we apply the town plan. That's what we do, and that's what we did well. And there was a change in the DRB just two, three terms ago when Stephanie and I came on. And we started to apply the regs and do our job the way it should be done. And not just based upon what people wanted, who they liked, or what they heard. So you're wrong, you know, you're, you're, you're dancing around the whole issue. Um, one thing I feel really strongly about, and I hope you'll address it, 
is that you really need to define conflict of interest. Gus disclosed his connections, and I know he has a lot, and that was appropriate. Rachel didn't come, I believe, in part because you're the dad. No, in fact, actually, um, I would not have kept her from speaking. Yeah. Really? But I'm facilitating a meeting. There's no, from my perspective, no conflict okay. of interest. She's a, I would not tell my wife she couldn't speak at town meeting. That's so <laughs> Okay, but that's something. I, I gotta go home. <laughs> that's something this town has to sort out. When Kari Bradley went into executive session for the discussion about whether or not. This Wait, I'd, I'd like to correct that. So that is not okay. It's not okay. No, characterizing Kari in a way that calls into question his integrity. There may be an inaccuracy. He did not go into the executive session. You, you were correct in calling out that we took, in, we took up two matters under executive session that night. But you also had him in session. We invited him into session to, to discuss another employee's and then he left when we went to, to have a conversation about the appointments. You never said that. You never you clarified never that. that. How are you supposed to tell us that? Why didn't anybody ask? We did. He, she asked. It was pointed you, out in March. You came straight out with an accusation of nepotism. Well, yes. That's what it looked That's like. not asking. Well, I, uh, the, the, just please don't dismiss me. I, I don't understand how your position gets to be uh, valid, validated for the courtesy of a phone call, and then, and then it's not reciprocated for a courtesy of phone call well, on the other end. You said it was in it. And it was after the executive session. I think we need to let Doc finish. Huh? So, uh, yes, right. please, well. can I finish? It was after the fact, and nothing was said that he was in there for a specific reason, that he stepped out when we started to talk about his wife. So there was the perception, the appearance of impropriety, of a conflict of interest. You need to figure that out when you go forward with your procedures. Um, I'm not going to say a lot more because a lot of it seems to be fruitless, but I will say that I'm really concerned about what appears to be an underrepresentation of all parts of town. Um, you know, we have three outstanding communities in this town. We have Maple Corner, we have East Palace, and we have Adam. And I believe, of late, East Palace has had the most attention. And then Maple Corner, all for good causes. The Dana is an is a important thing to be addressed. But there are other things going on in other parts of town. And you need to start getting not just engineers, but people who come from other parts of town and don't just um, identify with what's going on in East Dallas. So that's all. Would anybody else like to speak? Anybody who is on the screen? Raise your hand or turn the video, take your video off, oh, turn your video on. Anyone else? Yes. I'm Rose Pouch. I'm the recording secretary for the council Select Board. I've done my best to try to capture the essence of this meeting, but I actually just did not write. I couldn't possibly write all of your comments. I'm right now telling you, please excuse. I'm doing the best I can. Um, like I said, trying to capture the essence. And um, I think we all will clearly remember your comments and Stephanie's passion. And I love and clear hear your, your thoughts. Um, Jared, I appreciate your hard work on the planning commission, and I appreciate the hard work of the DRB and what you do um, in the Cali Select Board. And um, yeah, that's what I want to say. So when you see the minutes and say, was it in the minutes? This is, you know, yeah, but there's no way I could do that. <laughs> no. So, Chris Andrews. Um, That's so this meeting is a classic example of this town, where we have submissions, and we have some very distinct 
differences or viewpoints on what has transpired, how things are going, how decisions are made, directions of the town. All very different. And it's how does this community continue to move forward? And it's hard to do when you have some very different opinions. My perspective is that it has to be in this format, as hard as this format is. And I understand everyone's schedules are very full. But there's some significant issues facing this town. You know, the flooding, schools, the town plan. Really big issues. And select board, you guys are really in the hot seat. You are. I get that. But it, it seems to me, and it seems to me, one of the remedies is developing some protocols to address whether it's the connections because there are generations that have been here. There are people who are popping into the Maple Corner store chatting with Jamie. There are all these little conversations that go on every day. Whether, you know, your best friends may not agree, it's still best friends, you bump into each other at the store and you see it, you know, you're over in Montpelier, you're, you know, adamant, you bump in and you have all these conversations that are going on. But it seems there needs to be a little more direction in how to address those so that there aren't so many decisions made on, oh, well, I'm hearing from Dave over, you know, up there, up there, up there corner that, you know, over in Adamant they're doing this, or, you know, it just seems there needs to be some more protocols on how to address some of these issues. Mm -hmm. And it's not an easy thing. Jeff Hannon, um, came here for a variety of reasons. More than a decade ago, there was a discussion of the town plan that got me interested in how the town zoning went ahead. Um, I'm struck today, that is, and I don't mean to be critical, just interesting that you weren't exactly sure who adopts the plan versus the regs, and you're on the DRB. Uh, so I find that interesting. So I think you know, one of the things we as a town can do better is making sure everybody understands select board approves the town plan, this point, I think, it used to be different than some years ago. Uh, the, the regs are approved by the town at, at the town meeting day. Arguably, I think that's the right spill. Um, and I think Jordan talked about, uh, I'll call it my words, not yours perhaps, friction between conservation and development. That's been around since the 60s and 70s when we started to realize, wait, development does have an impact on the land, on the air, on the water. We saw it most, uh, this conversation is very apt right now, very timely. Last week, a few miles from here, Plainfield was, you know, plowed and we got hammered um, because of climate change, and that's a real issue. So I think we've got to figure out how to develop in a spirit of, yes, we want people to have a home they can afford, but we also don't want to uh, toss out our, our vision and goals for Conservation. That's a struggle you're going to have to go through. Right? Good luck. We're all counting on you. On your fifth child. Hope, yeah. hope the delivery goes well. Uh, <laughs> so I do think this is a, a, a good conversation. We'll try to pay attention more as you go forward because I think it's uh, it's important. It's it's too bad that there are some hard feelings here uh, and how that process goes. But I think going forward, we need to be more transparent about the process so that we all understand what it is. Which direction we're going, in, including whether if the select board thinks that there's not enough development, that would be an open and transparent conversation. I hope, uh, and it would come, I guess, in the form of a planning document. Uh, and as if the regs get their implementing the plan, so you've got to be one with the other. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Okay, we are past time. Scott, you have your hand up. You want the last word? Well, um, this is something I've heard Gus say. And it was recently uh, spoken without attribution to Gus. But I quote, while we may disagree, we are not enemies. Mm -hmm. We're neighbors. We're friends, co-workers, citizens, and most importantly, we are fellow residents in Calais. Thank you, Gus. For, that was our president yesterday. But he took it. Okay. I'd like to say that it was very, I heard it, but it was very nice. <laughs> 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 well, I'd like to say the world is a mess. Here, here. Yeah, yeah. Here, here. Are we ready to adjourn? I just want to say, I think this meeting demonstrated that people can do just what Scott did. Yeah. Well, I'd like to thank everybody for participating in the conversation and working through the dialogue. There's more work to be done on a lot of fronts. So thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you again. Uh, entertain a motion to adjourn? Second. Uh, any discussion? <laughs> <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> One more hour. All in favor? One more hour. Uh,